Okay. <clears throat> so, hello everyone, and welcome to the next Gravity Gula of this semester. Our speaker today is Bastian Diaz. Uh, Bastian completed his PhD at Universidad Técnica Federico Santa Maria in 2018. And during these studies, he did an internship at Boston University and held a sitting uh, position at the Technical University of Dresden. Uh, then from two, um, 2020 to January 2022, he held his first postdoctoral position at the Technical University of Munich. Currently, Bastian is a postdoctoral researcher at Universidad de Santiago de Chile. And now we would like to hand over to him who would, uh, who would like to <coughs> to tell us about the Z3 scalar dark matter with strong gamma ray and positron fluxes. So, Bastian, uh, we are all yours. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Sebastian, uh, for this nice in introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure, of course, to, to be presenting here in Graviticulas. Uh, and yes, so as Sebastian said, uh, this is the title of uh, the presentation. This was was done in collaboration with uh, Karim Golvani. He is, uh, is from Iran, Arak University. So um, first of all, uh, I'm going to re resume uh, this presentation in this uh, in a very few words. Mm -hmm. And please uh, interrupt me at any moment if you have any comment, uh, uh, whatever. Please interrupt me. So um, the resume of this uh, of this work is basically the following: we studied a, a, an extension to the standard model. It's a very simple extension in which we introduced two new fields um, that transform in a non-trivial way under a new Z3 symmetry. This is a, a, a complex scalar uh, which will act as the dark matter and a vector like lepton, which is a fermion, and it will be uh, the mediator between the dark matter and the standard model uh, particles. We studied this uh, model, this particular framework in, in the mass range uh, of some uh, GEVs up to uh, several GEVs. Uh, and we contrast the, this uh, framework with different uh, constraints, for instance, perturbativity, collider, direct detection, and indirect detection. And finally, we studied some uh, signals coming from positrons and gamma rays. So basically, that is, uh, is the resume of this, uh, of this work. So the outline introduction, then we are going to to focus on a very simple specific model, uh, which I call it uh, Z2 real scalar dark matter. And then uh, based on that or inspired by this uh, model that has been studied in the literature, we, we go to, to our uh, scenario, the Z3 complex scalar dark matter, then some constraints, uh, some results and the conclusions. So just to warm up this presentation, let me just uh, in this slide uh, talk a little bit or mention basically the evidence, the evidence that we have from uh, of dark matter. And it comes from uh, the astrophysical side. Um, uh, as you can see here in the, in the pictures, we have the rotation curves, bullet clusters, CMB, um, techniques as uh, gravitational lensing, and matter distribution in the universe. All these proofs uh, are, are necessary in order to finally uh, get uh, to get the to the conclusion that we we live in a world that uh, they basically the energy distribution, as you can see in the in the cake in the right side. Um, this. There is something that we call dark matter, and it made up around the 26% of uh, the total uh, budget. And 70% is, is dark energy, and the rest, 
the tiny fraction is the our normal matter. So uh, this, of course, is a resume. There are a lot of details behind uh, each part, but taking in, in, into account this uh, that this dark matter is a, a big portion of the of the cake. Of course, from the for par particle physicists, we try to understand or we want to explain this phenomena by elementary particles. As you know, we have the our periodic table uh, with the fermions and bosons and the uh, recently discovered or no more than yeah, 10 years more or less uh, the Higgs boson. And of course, we think that uh, but of course it can be uh, not only a single particle but it can it can be a, a new whole world that uh, with many properties and interacts in some way with the standard model and the mass scale of the dark this dark matter that people has been studying uh, since uh, or several years uh, several years uh, span a lot of orders of magnitude, as you can see in this uh, figure. Um, you can have uh, very light bosons uh, with, as you can see, with uh, ridiculous uh, small masses uh, up to uh, times, uh, several times of uh, solar masses, for instance. Uh, of course, uh, the, the possibilities are huge, and but in our case, in order, uh, just uh, we are going to focus on this blue region, basically, in, a, in a, some portion actually of this blue region, in which uh, you expect some. Uh, there is a paradigm, maybe it's one of the most popular paradigms uh, called the WIMP paradigm, and our scenario is is going to be basically in this uh, in this region. So we are going to focus on on that mass scales. And, but not only that, um, we are going to um, constrain even more this, uh, this region in the sense that uh, we are going to see a, a particular type of dark matter, which is a scalar one. And in the literature, you find a lot of possibilities with the scalar dark matter based on uh, discrete symmetries, continuous symmetries in order to stabilize your dark matter particle. Um, you have, uh, for instance, the, the famous uh, real singlet Z2 scalar, which has been studied uh, for more than 15 years, I would say. And it has been constrained, highly constrained. If you think um, this uh, dark matter component as the, as the only source of dark matter, uh, this, uh, this scenario has been uh, strongly constrained uh, for masses below the uh, 1 TeV. Um, but of course, there are other possibilities, uh, other extensions based on, on for instance, uh, based on not only not in, in a Z2 symmetry, for instance, but in, Z, in a Z3. In that case, you have complex scalar and with new possibilities, or you can also uh, have um, a pseudonamugals and bosons uh, coming from the spontaneous symmetry breaking of a global U1 symmetry. Uh, and so on, so forth, uh, and and finally, you can not only deal with a scalar, single scalars, um, or new uh, scalar sectors, but you can add fermions also, which is part of this uh, presentation. Uh, and that direction has been studied uh, for some years, uh, actually. And so, yes. Basically, if you think uh, many options, and I'm even um, actually I'm not not even mention uh, these uh, the possibilities that appear when you change the paradigm of the production of dark matter in the early universe. That uh, gives you uh, new possibilities as well. Uh, but I don't have too much time to enter into. Uh, all, to sweep all the, uh, the possibilities. But here we are going to focus on this, uh, as I said, uh, the wind paradigm, in which we think that this uh, dark sector, our dark matter with the fermion, was in, uh, we assume that they were in thermal equilibrium 
uh, in the early universe when the, the universe was uh, dominated by, by radiation. But at some point, uh, the temperature was not uh, enough in order to keep the, uh, the, the reactions between these, uh, the dark sector particles or the creation of the dark sector particles uh, along with the standard model particles. So reactions or the chemical equilibrium uh, drops or a breakdown at, in, at some point. So the amount of dark matter in that sense uh, starts to decrease until the expansion of the, of the universe uh, uh, gets bigger uh, than the, the rate collisions of, uh, of your uh, particle, dark matter particle creation. And in that moment occurs what is called the freeze out, which is, uh, you can see here in the Dutch, the Dutch uh, horizontal lines. And this is uh, basically the abundance, the abundance of uh, dark matter. Uh, or the density, if you want. Um, and it depends, of course, in this case of uh, the, the strength of the interactions, which is uh, this uh, um, average annihilation cross-section. And uh, the bigger is the annihilation cross-section, the lower is the, uh, the final relic abundance of your dark matter particle. And as you can see here, this is a typical, in, in blue here in the, uh, this is a typical um, expression for um, the abundance that you expect uh, as a function of your uh, cross-section, basically, of uh, the interaction between dark matter and, and the rest of the uh, standard model particles. So this is uh, our framework. And of course, there are many ways to test uh, this hypothesis. Uh, actually, this is uh, what I'm seeing here. The, uh, there are three mechanisms in order to test dark matter, but they are not the only way, in my opinion. <laughs> you have other sources like uh, the observing the CMB or the power uh, spectrum of, uh, of the matter distribution in the, in the universe. But these are uh, very direct ways in some, yeah, in some way, uh, in order to test uh, the, the, the ideas of uh, dark matter interactions. So for instance, uh, if you go uh, in, in the upward direction, you have uh, what is called the direct detection, in which you expect normally uh, elastic scattering between your dark matter particle, chi here, or chi, yeah, chi, uh, with the nucleons. And here you have uh, many experiments. And also you have uh, the annihilation of the dark matter in, in the center of our galaxy, for instance, and you expect the products uh, to be our, uh, our, our uh, particles, uh, standard model particles, for instance. And also you can produce, in principle, you expect to produce uh, in, in, at the laboratory or at colliders, your dark matter uh, impairs uh, at this uh, at, uh, yeah, um, hadron colliders or lepton colliders. So this is our, these are the three ways. And these three ways uh, are, they, the three are relevant in, in, in this presentation. Um, of course, sorry, I, I don't have enough time to enter into more details about this, but if you have any question, uh, uh, please uh, interrupt me. Uh, so let me, uh, before to enter into, into the model, uh, to the Z3 model, uh, this is a, um, was, oh, this is the model that we were based on uh, before the, uh, the construction of our model, in which basically um, this model has been studied by several groups and you introduce two, two components uh, to the standard model, a real scalar singlet, uh, uh, chi here, and a vector-like lepton, which is a fermion that uh, uh, vector-like uh, means uh, interacts like uh, the photon, in which uh, the left and uh, right parts of your spinner interacts in the same way. In other words, uh, the, the interaction of this fermion is uh, non-chiral. 
and it has a, it's a, in this case is SU3 color singlet, a SU2 L singlet, um, and hypercharge equal minus one. So if you introduce uh, this Z2 symmetry for both particles, you you end up with this uh, Lagrangian, uh, the kinetic term for your fermion. Here you, you can see the covariant derivative here um, in a Yukawa-like coupling, which is uh, uh, re uh, particularly relevant in our study. Um, so pay attention to this interaction. Uh, y here is just the uh, coupling constant. You have the your uh, scalar uh, particle, your new fermion, and you can write down here all these uh, the, the leptons of the standard model. For simplicity, uh, you can consider only the the first lepton family, and the potential that you can construct is a uh, uh, very simple. Um, you have the Higgs sector, and the new sector uh, resembles in this in this part uh, the standard model. Uh, sorry, the Higgs sector, and you have the Higgs uh, a Higgs portal here. Uh, after electroweak symmetry breaking, you have a, a new contribution from the Higgs portal to the mass of, of your uh, real singlet uh, scalar. So what, um, without entering in, into too many details, of course, in the, of this model, um, let me say some, a few words about this, uh, the, some characteristic of, uh, of this model. So the, for instance, if you, um, the relic density of, uh, of your scalar particle is defined by these three parameters. Um, here in this study, basically we neglect the Higgs portal. We, uh, not only in what I'm talking about here in this particular model, but in, in, our, in our model also, we neglect uh, the Higgs portal. But yeah, in our paper, at the end, we discuss a little bit what could be the consequences, or what are the, what the what, what the consequences are when you uh, take sizable values for your Higgs portal? But in this case, uh, it's uh, particularly interesting uh, when you consider this Yukawa-like coupling because it gives you something new in comparison with the Higgs portal. In particular, um, as I said, uh, you can get the relic abundance of this. Uh, of this uh, dark matter, uh, the real uh, scalar dark matter, uh, based on these three parameters. Uh, but not only that, uh, uh, um, this uh, this type of models has been studied uh, because they present a particularly uh, indirect detection signal uh, to be observed and to be contrasted with the astrophysical background that you you have uh, when you observe uh, the for instance the center <coughs> the center of our galaxy and that means when you have for instance the annihilation of your dark matter particle you expect uh, this type of process a uh, process that goes uh, two bodies uh, annihilating into three bodies emitting in this sense uh, a gamma uh, a photon um, a high energy photon. And the spectra that you expect in this type of process is, uh, is uh, what is shown in this, in, in this figure in, in below in the left. Uh, and you can see that here X, this is the, uh, the spectra, which is uh, the N uh, to the X, uh, which is basically defined by, uh, as the um, differential cross section. Um, as a function of the of this uh, parameter x, which is the fraction of energy of your photon that was emitted in this process, um, uh, in, in comparison with the with the mass of your dark matter particle. So, as you can see, the the probability of uh, high energy photons uh, be, uh, in your in your annihilation uh, becomes in uh, increases as uh, for high energy photons uh, as you decrease the mass shift between the your dark matter particle and then the new vector light lepton the 
sorry, the mass of the of your vector line lepton, which is uh, uh, is this mu that appears here. So uh, the small the 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 closer are the masses of these uh, the of these two new particles, the the peak is higher uh, at for uh, energetic photons, and that is a this type of a spectra is useful in order to, as I said, in order to discriminate your signal of your photons uh, coming from this type of annihilations uh, in, uh, in comparison with the astrophysical background, which you have a lot of photons. And, and But with this distribution, you can uh, discriminate your signal that you are looking at uh, of all the background. And, um, in particular, you can see that here, this type of process uh, as mu, as a mass shift between the two, the two, uh, the two new particles, uh, as the mass shift uh, becomes um, smaller, you can see that the cross section increases in comparison with other process or other annihilations of your dark matter particles into, for instance, two photons, which are process that occurs at one loop. You have a, um, you have a radiative uh, suppression in that sense. Um, of course, here also, here you have a, 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 a suppression, um, but in, in the case of uh, gamma gamma is uh, bigger. And the effects of this internal gram stratum uh, also part, uh, increases your uh, annihilation cross-section. So uh, in that sense, this type of uh, process uh, gives you, um, you expect uh, a sizable signal um, for your, for photons in this type of annihilation. So this is our, basically the main characteristic and people have uh, studied this model uh, uh, constraining the parameter space uh, using uh, different techniques, um, as I've said, uh, but if basically the message here is that if you see the parameter space in these two plots, um, this is the mass of the fermion in the, in the y axis and in the x axis you have the dark matter particle mass. And in the left you have, in that moment, this uh, was a paper of 2014, and they uh, studied this type of, uh, some constraints on the parameter space of the, mo uh, of the model. And the blue regions, for instance, here are all the our, uh, constraints coming from indirect detection, in particular from Fermilat and HES. Uh, and you can see that some portions of the parameter space uh, are uh, ruled out by those experiments. But if you go, for instance, uh, to projections of uh, what is called the CTA experiment, you can see that most of the parameter space uh, gets uh, constrained by this uh, by these CTA projections. So in that sense, um, you don't have too much uh, parameter space in this particular model, only when you have a very um, a degenerate uh, a masses in, the, in this case, as you can see in some region uh, in, this, in this part. So the model itself is highly constrained by uh, gamma rays. Uh, so you don't have too many options in this sense. Uh, so we were wondering what, what happened if we uh, consider an extension to this model, um, going to from this uh, Z2 symmetry to this, this uh, Z3 symmetry. And that means that now the fields uh, we go in the same scheme, basically, but now um, we have to promote this, uh, this scalar um, to a complex scalar, which uh, will transform with this, uh, uh, in this way, as you can see, and the fermion in the same way. When you um, consider that, you, you can see that you end up with the same Lagrangian. Now, yes, uh, the notation is a little bit different. Uh, we use the uh, G here, uh, but you have the same, the same Yukawa-like term. 
um, for your complex scalar vector like lepton and your lepton is a standard model lepton. But additionally, you get not only the same or the same type of uh, uh, terms in the in your uh, in your potential, but now you can write down this uh, cubic term terms for uh, for your uh, your uh, dark matter particle, which will be the s particle. So there is a triple uh, like a a three a three uh, how do you say um, a, ver a vertex with three legs uh, interaction and you have now a mu three parameter which is a dimensional uh, full parameter. So in this sense, we have a new interaction here, and we wanted to study what the consequences are of uh, coming from this uh, new term. So um, after electro, electro well, we assume that S doesn't get any VEV. Um, after electroweak symmetry breaking, you have the two masses of your of your particles uh, of the, the the two scalar, the Higgs and the new scalar. <clears throat> um, the relevant parameters of this model are these five. Uh, but as I've said, uh, we are not going to consider the Higgs portal. We are going to explore only the Yukawa like term. Uh, the this coupling and also the the last one here. And as I've said, the, in the wind paradigm, normally one explores uh, explores uh, the mass range come, uh, of some GeVs up to some TeVs. Um, um, theoretical arguments uh, said that the maximum value that mu three can take is not bigger than twice the mass of the of, of, of your a scalar particle. Uh, I don't have uh, time uh, to enter into the details uh, here. Uh, so, but the message is uh, basically if you go to higher values of this uh, dimension full parameter, uh, you can have some problems uh, with the vacuum of your theory. Uh, you can enter into a vacuum that doesn't respect this uh, Z3 symmetry. Uh, and that uh, will jeopardize the stability of your dark matter particle. Uh, I, I don't know if you see the, maybe I, I should have mentioned this before, but how do we know that S is a, a stable particle? Well, in principle, it's not, but if you, if, if you set some hierarchy between your uh, S particle and the Psi, uh, saying that the Psi is always with higher mass than the S field, uh, you, in that sense, uh, you don't have any possibility that S can decay into something. Uh, otherwise, if you if you put a psi the psi field uh, with a lower mass than the S field, in that case, uh, it will be not uh, stable. But always, we choose the the first option. So uh, there are some collider constraints, just uh, a few words. Um, in, at the NHC, for instance, you expect uh, the production of some particles that are born uh, from the famous drill jump process, which is uh, this type of uh, interaction, uh, annihilation quark and tight quark, uh, producing a Z boson or a photon. And since you have some new partners here, uh, well, this is a picture of for supersymmetry uh, searches, but in our case, uh, it's very similar. Uh, in, instead of these S leptons, you have, uh, you can think our vector light leptons here. I should have put another picture actually uh, for our model, but it's the same topology. Um, you have uh, here the vector light leptons, going out from this uh, of the vector bosons, bosons. And then you have in the final state, uh, two leptons, uh, standard model leptons plus uh, uh, missing energy, which is in the case, instead of neutralinos, uh, we have the, the, the scalar, a scalar particle is our S, our S particle. So um, we have uh, used some constraints that ha, uh, has, have been set uh, by different uh, groups. 
uh, in particular, uh, vector like leptons, chart, uh, are, they are charged particles and they have been ruled out or the masses of them should be uh, above the 100 GeVs. Um, also, we have used some projection limits that uh, some people have uh, worked uh, using uh, some simulated uh, events uh, of PP proton-proton uh, collisions at 14 TeV uh, at 100 uh, femtobarn, inverse femtobarn of luminosity, integrated luminosity. And also we have used uh, some uh, bounds from of what is called compare, uh, compressed uh, spectra in, in the regime in which both particles are pretty close in mass. This type of uh, collider constraints result to be highly uh, important in order to to constrain our parameter space, as you will see in a moment. Uh, the relic abundance uh, of this type of... By the way, is there any question, comment? Nothing? Okay. Please, any question, just interrupt me. As I've said, um, the relic abundance of this um, of this dark matter particle, uh, of the S particle, is uh, produced uh, by these three, three level processes. As you can see here, um, B, C, and D are processes that were known in the, in the or were studied in the liter literature uh, based uh, appearing in this uh, Z2 uh, symmetry models with to, uh, to new particles. Um, but in our case, we have this, uh, uh, this uh, new uh, diagram in which you have the, the annihilation of your dark matter particle producing in, in the S channel uh, your S particle and then uh, the yukawa light coupling here emitting uh, a, a, an, an electron and your vector light particle vector line lepton in this case. And this term is particularly relevant, um, as you will see. Uh, basically, uh, um, let, me, let me go just, uh, yeah, uh, in, in the left plot, for instance, you can, you can see that the deviations in the relic abundance that you expect as a function of the mass and the mu3 a parameter, how this parameter deviates uh, when this, uh, this mu3 parameter is not present. I mean, remember that mu3 is this uh, interaction, is uh, the self-interaction of your uh, scalar, of, the, of your new uh, scalar. So um, fixing the mass of the vector light lepton at 200 GBs, uh, the Yukawa like coupling 0.1, no Higgs portal. You can see that if you start with mu3 equals zero, um, you, you get a very high uh, relic abundance in which here you see the, the dashed uh, red line is the, what is uh, the, the measured relic abundance today. But as you increase your mu3, you can see that it can change in some orders of magnitude uh, or decrease. And that means basically that, uh, as, as you know, um, increasing the, the cross-section, um, which is basically uh, changing this mu3 parameter implies that you are uh, increasing the, or the weight of your A diagram, basically, in the, in the calculation of your relic abundance. So the, of course, as I said, uh, there are some stability and vacuum, uh, this, the vacuum of your uh, scalar potential uh, is bounded by above. Um, so in, in principle, this picture is just to see the behavior or the general behavior of, uh, of the relic abundance as a function of mu3. But of course, you cannot go too much in that sense uh, without breaking uh, your uh, Z3 symmetry, which protects uh, the stability of your dark matter particle. And in, in the right plot, simply we 
compare the predictions of our model in blue, the blue curves in the plane um, of the yukawa like coupling, the mass of the of the dark matter particle for for different mu. This uh, this mu here is the is the fraction of uh, mass of the vector light lepton and the new scalar. Um, and we here, we just uh, fixed the mu three parameter to twice the mass of the dark matter particle. And here we have seen all, uh, we, we are comparing basically the predictions of our scenario um, to the, the first model that I showed you, um, the Z, uh, Z2 uh, dark matter model in which correspond to the great curves. And the overall uh, result here is that all the, the predictions uh, or the points that gives you the correct relic abundance in, the, in this model requires lower uh, Yukawa-like couplings. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, low, uh, in our model, our model requires um, lower Yukawa-like couplings, a uh, gypsy in comparison with the other, but that is not difficult to guess because um, now uh, you have another uh, interaction. You have uh, the mu three, so you are compensating uh, this effect in some way. Uh, so the consequences to have in, in a model uh, a smaller Yukawa-like couplings will allow you to have uh, to evade some cons uh, strong constraints, uh, in particular direct detection and collider collider bounds. So uh, let me just. Uh, I think that, yeah, um, just four slides. Uh, here, we just, uh, we calculated the, the flux uh, or yeah, the, the average annihilation cross-section for this type of process, um, the annihilation of your dark matter particle uh, emitting a gamma rays and in principle, uh, yeah, here, so you see in the plot, for instance, the, the cross-section today for the annihilation uh, emitting gammas, gamma rays as a function of the mass of, the, of your dark matter particle. Uh, and the constraints, you can see some constraints here uh, of uh, Fermilat and Hess as the projection of CTA in, in red. Um, again, we here we are uh, comparing uh, the predictions of our model in blue for the values of fixing the, uh, the value of mu3 to, to twice the uh, mass of your dark matter particle and the predictions of uh, for the same um, masses and yukawas uh, in the in the Z2 model in the with the gray curves. And here we are. We were reproducing the same uh, predictions in than some, yeah, this paper, uh, Garni. Uh, we got the same uh, using uh, micromegas. But uh, in that in that sense, as you can see, that model, the Z2 Z2 model, uh, becomes uh, constrained by indirect detection, uh, clearly, um, and CTA will. Uh, rule out big portions, as you can see as well. But since we have a smaller Yukawa-like uh, couplings, we expect in this type of process uh, smaller uh, signals. In that sense, we are decreasing, we are uh, pushing down the, the, uh, the predictions of uh, the cross-section, and in that sense, you are evading the, the gamma rays. Is that good or bad? Uh, it depends on your criteria, in my opinion, because uh, you want to test, uh, of course, your model. Um, but you don't, yeah, it, it has different effects at the end uh, in this sense. And we are pushing, or we are, it, for this particular plot, we are setting uh, the mu3 term to its maximum. Uh, but if you decrease this, you expect that the blue curves go. Uh, uh, uplift in that sense, and they eventually uh, start to 
to, um, to touch the, uh, the experimental curves. So this is the extreme case in, in actually, but this is just a, you know, a, 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 a plot in order to see that we can evade some strong constraints that were ruling out uh, big portions of other similar models. And positrons, uh, also you can calculate or you can get this information about the uh, positron flux that is emitting, emitted uh, if uh, in your uh, dark matter annihilation today. And you can get this information, the fluxes, uh, uh, again, using uh, micromegas. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. And you can see here in the continuous, with the continuous lines, uh, the predictions of our model. Uh, here in the y-axis, you have basically the flux. And as a function of here in the x-axis, the positron energy that comes, uh, the positron energy that is uh, emitted by uh, this type of processes that you, you can see. Those are the typical processes that produces um, positrons in this type of model. Um, in particular, uh, the third one is uh, is the new of uh, of our model. This is a innovative uh, process, let's say, uh, in comparison with the, the others that are are known. Uh, the second one is the Bremsstrahlung, uh, the the process that I showed you uh, in some slides before. But the third one results to be uh, very strong, and and that is uh, an interesting, in our opinion, this is uh, basically one of our main results. I don't have time, of course, to explain the details. There are some details or kinematical details here, but the message is this, uh, the, the, the fluxes uh, results to be um, the, um, high in comparison with the dashed uh, line, for instance, uh, the gray and the, sorry, the, the gray is a continuous one, but it goes here. And uh, the dashed one, uh, gr the, the green dashed uh, are the predictions when you, you don't have this third process in action. Um, in that sense, uh, you are getting the fluxes of positrons only from the one and second process. Um, in that sense, uh, you can see that uh, when you have the third process uh, open, represented by the continuous uh, blue and green curve, uh, you have uh, many orders of magnitude above the, what was expected and or what was resulting in the Z2, Z2 model, for instance. So that is uh, our uh, uh, yeah, one of the main results. And let me finish with this. Um, we scan in, in, a, in the mass plane of uh, our new particles, uh, the mass of this, the dark matter in, in the y-axis and the vector light lepton in the x-axis. We used our random scan in order to explore the parameter space. As a function of uh, the color here uh, of, of the points correspond to uh, the value of your gypsy uh, coupling. And all the points that you see here gives you the correct relic abundance. And the, yeah, um, you can see for instance, the green, uh, the, the green region is, uh, is not a viable, uh, viable uh, region since uh, you have an unstable S it has higher mass than uh, Psi. Um, and yes, there are others, uh, and the, all the points that are below, um, the points below this continuous black line are ruled out again uh, by colliders, collider constraints. And uh, the dashed line is simply a reference in which uh, the mass of the, twice the mass of the scalar uh, is equal to the mass of, the f uh, of, of your vector lepton. And that's uh, an interesting 
it's an interesting or particularly uh, it's uh, relevant this uh, this uh, line or this uh, equivalence since in that when you have the equality or you are above that today at temp uh, zero temperature uh, you expect this type of process basically uh, the third process to be uh, um, participating or, or, or let me uh, let me say in another way if you have uh, the a process and this annihilation but um, you are the, ma the masses of your uh, initial states are not enough big in order to create an on shell particle upside uh, the psi here uh, this uh, diagram uh, becomes suppressed so normally uh, in order to have this diagram uh, uh, i mean if it, if you want this diagram to contribute significantly you want you need that the the mass of the, the energy in the initial state uh, you need that uh, the mass of the of your dark matter particle uh, uh, to be above the mass of what you need in the final state in order to contribute significantly and so above that line you expect that diagram that i i was uh, i was showing you you expect that that diagram is a uh, particularly particularly uh, relevant but in this case in, the, in these three plots we are using mu3 equals zero so we are setting that diagram exactly to zero actually we are uh, keeping all the rest and um, just to see um, then we are going to see the effects of the when you change mu3 in this random scan and basically if you uh, the first the second plot correspond when you uh, include uh, gamma rays uh, constraints and you can see a tiny fraction here are ruled out but uh, once you go to uh, to direct detection you you get that uh, all your parameter space basically becomes uh, ruled out in this case in our case uh, direct detection occurs at the one loop level. Um, but even in that case, it's uh, uh, seen on one T uh, ex exclude most of the of the points. Only a, a very specific region here, which is called the co-annihilation region, uh, uh, remains under these uh, strong constraints. In, in our in when you have this uh, mu3 term, term at its extreme, you can see now that uh, the random scan shows something very different in that the in the region above this uh, dashed line and all uh, in comparison with the uh, with the previous slide in which mu3 was exactly uh, equal zero so in this case you can see that the coupling yukawa like coupling decreases uh, significantly uh, in comparison with the uh, the previous uh, case or even if you, you can see that the change of uh, of the of the color here because now you have your new new processes in the calculation of your relic abundance but now as you have another coupling mu3 uh, you don't need um, too high uh, yukawa like couplings in order to get the correct relic abundance now in the second plot here you can see some exclusion coming from positrons and gamma rays, uh, since now you have a uh, strong fluxes in that sense, uh, so you expect some exclusion uh, in this in this part. But uh, if you now take additionally a xenon one T uh, direct detection constraints, you will see that not all the not all the parameter space is, is ruled out, but only those those uh, those points with high uh, Yukawa like couplings, but uh, still you have uh, uh, you still have a um, uh, remaining 
uh, parameter space here in, in, this, in this region. So in that sense, it uh, gives you new possibilities for masses of your dark matter particle around the electroweak scale, or even yeah, 400, 500 GeVs easily in this scenario. And that was uh, uh, this type of complex, dark, uh, complex uh, scalar dark matter was studied before in typical models with Z2 symmetries and uh, this type of uh, parameter space, this parameter space was normally ruled out by direct detection. So the power of this, uh, you can see that this new scheme uh, with a new Z3 symmetry open up the uh, parameter, parameter space and gives you some new signals uh, uh, that uh, were not identified or were, were not present in other uh, typical frameworks with uh, the typical symmetry, Z2 symmetry. So yeah, the conclusions are there. And just uh, the, the last comment is uh, here we were, we went in, uh, in the most simple form uh, of this uh, scenario with a Z3 symmetry. Remember that we used, uh, we assigned some hypercharge for the uh, new fermion, but in principle it can, it can be a doublet of SU2L for instance, or it can have color. So in that sense, um, yeah, in, that, in, in the latter sense, you, uh, in the latter case, you have to introduce uh, some couplings with the quarks, for instance, and new phenomenology will appear. And in that case, in principle, you expect uh, antiprotons, for instance, uh, antiproton signals, um, at the same time of probably having a gamma, a strong gamma rays uh, signals. Uh, so the possibilities are, I think that, uh, uh, there are a lot of possibilities to be explored in this uh, in this way. Um, well, sorry, maybe may I, I talk too much. Uh, thank you. That was my presentation. Okay, so thank you very much, Bastian. It was just a, a wonderful talk. Um, so, does any any have any questions for Bastian? So maybe I, I will go with the, with the first question, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, uh, Professor Goras. Yes, uh, go ahead, please. <clears throat> uh, OK, a naive question. Uh, since uh, I understood that you were talking about mass of the scalar in the region of several hundred GeV, Mm -hmm. But in the uh, in, in the conclusions, you mentioned that you can get several TV dark matter. Now I'm a little bit confused. In your model, the typical masses of the scalar are below TV or can easily go above TV scale. How is that? Yeah, yeah. What I've shown, uh, what I have shown uh, in. Uh, so far is um, yeah dark matter um, up to one TV. Uh, since direct detection constraints of, uh, of xenon one T uh, operates uh, uh, until that point, but yeah uh, we have explored uh, above the TV for masses uh, one two three. Uh, actually, I have um, yeah we scan. Um, to higher masses, um, there is a viable uh, parameter space in this case, as you can see. Um, and in this case, yeah, we are um, allowing couplings, Yukawa like couplings, uh, uh, up to 10. Maybe it's too much normally, depending on your perturbative crit criteria. But if you, yeah. Um, but still, if you if you if your perturbative criteria is uh, below, let's say pi equal pi, you still have uh, masses um, up to five GVs, for instance. In this, this scenario. 
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody? So, Bastien, I have a question. So, <clears throat> you, um, I apologize in advance if you already said this, but you assume that the new sector, this is the Z3 uh, model, mm -hmm. only couples to couples to to the first right hand leptin generation. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And. And that was in order to avoid leptin flavor violation processes, like the immune muon came to an electron and photon, right? Yes, yes. Uh, flavor changing neutral currents. Mm. So, so I was mm -hmm. wondering if do you suspect that a, do you suspect that similar results um, um, or let's say do you suspect similar results if you allow? For such violation processes, uh, including more more generations after imposing current constraints on lepton and lepton flare violation, or oh, to the electron to the tau. Yeah, uh, let's say that. Let's say that you add uh, con uh, cobbles with new um, let's say with new families, mm. then you will have, as far as I know. Uh, these processes that violate lepto, lepto five violation, but there are cur currently there are uh, there are uh, bounds for these processes. So uh, yes, I don't know if you have contemplated in the future uh, such a scenario to include more families and to mm. include so, that um, bounds on lepton flare violations. Um, I. I I understand that, of course, you can you can do that. Um, actually, it if you include, for instance, the three families at the same time, it sounds more natural, I would say, because at the end here, if we assume one coupling at, at, at a time, um, you are switching off basically the the rest of the of the couplings, yeah. and but the symmetries allow allows you. To have the others, uh, I here I'm just simplifying the uh, the scenario a lot, but of course, if uh, if you want to be more natural, uh, uh, in the sense of or in the even in the tough sense, uh, you have in principle to consider all the couplings, but yes, uh, you have to face all other constraints as uh, as, as you have said, mm -hmm. uh, but. Yeah, I'm not familiar too familiar with flavor physics. Uh, I understand that it's very interesting, and there are still uh, open uh, open things uh, for some some deviations that have been there for a long time. So, Pasian. So it seems we have a connection problem with Hassan. Uh, Hassan, are you there? Yeah, there's a problem here. Uh, I will give Bastian one minute. Let's hope that its connection gets better. Oh, Bastian, I can see your mouse moving around the screen, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, there seems to be a more profound problem here. So um, I think this is a, a good place to stop maybe.
because the internet of Bastian is not good. So um, I want to thank Bastian, <laughs> even if he's not hear me, for talk and thank you everyone as well. And I will see you in the next seminar, hopefully. So thank you very much for listening to this uh, ridiculous talk. Bye bye. Okay. <clears throat> Ciao. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Ciao. Thank you very much.